In this video, we're going to take a look at Fibonacci and technical analysis using gold in this particular case. And Fibonacci is the sum of the previous two numbers, starting with 0 and 1. For we take 0 and 1, we add those together, that gives us 1. Then we take the 1 and 1, that gives us 2. 1 and 2 gives us 3. 2, one, two and 3, 5 and so on and so on towards infinity. This was found many centuries ago in an experiment trying to find a mathematical formula that calculates rabbits' births, birth of rabbits. And apparently this Fibonacci sequence is nature's ratio. And the ratio is the number one number divided by its previous one, where you can find these Fibonacci's available within the spiral of the galaxy on so many plant life and well obviously in the stock market too and what we do to get the golden ratio of what turns out to be 1.618033 is you take its uh, number divided by its previous one and it will eventually work its way towards 16108 or the 1.618033 for 233 divided by 144 would give 1.61805. And what this uh, means if we do the reverse of the uh, mathematical calculation, do the uh, smaller number divided by the larger number, you would get 0 0.618. So if we do some math and we take a look at the Fibonacci, and it doesn't matter which number you start with, I'm using 144, you could use 144 as a denominator, you could use 987. The bigger the number you use, the more accurate you will be towards the golden ratio. So if you take the next number after 144, which is 233, you're going to get 161.8. The next following number would get you 261.8 followed by 423.6, This is important in calculating Fibonacci upside towards the stock market. And the right-hand side is where you divide the larger number, and it goes from 61.8 down to 38.2, a 23.6, a 14.6, and a 9% Fibonacci retracement. So now let's take an example of this and assume that we have a range from 50 and 60. And we take the Fibonacci, we multiply the difference, and in this case the range is 10, and you add the bottom of 50. So in the 161.8%, uh, we take the 1.6181, we multiply 10, and we add 50, that gets us 66.18. So if we were trading in a range from 50 to 60 and we're breaking out, the Fibonacci can tell us that the next likely resistance target would be 66.18. And we'll cover more of this Fibonacci upside within this video. And on the retracement, the, one, the way Fibonacci is used most of the time, that's where you take the range of a particular area. And if you're retracing back, this can tell you where you'd be going towards. So you go from 50 to 60, markets start selling off, and well, the next target you would say is 56.18. And if you break that, you go to 53.82. And once you go from 9% down to zero, you're just talking about going like from 50.90 to 50 to 50.70, 50.60, and so on. But this is the basics towards Fibonacci. Now, why does it work so well? I think it's because, one, it could be nature's way of making things work. But it's also because many people take a look at the Fibonacci, which is a good reason why it works also. So now what we're going to do is take a look at the gold technical analysis. What we have here is the 10 minute tick chart on GLD, the gold ETF. It sets the bottom on the 27th, 28th of July. We can establish that we were in this range from 113, 108. When we use the Fibonacci upside, we can uh, see how 
the first level of Fibonacci, it broke through it fairly well. And what I notice within Fibonacci doesn't mean because you're there you're going to find resistance, but if it fails, that means that the acceleration you have to consider to be higher, which then made it to its 261 level, which was an area where it did consolidate for a while within time. And then most recently it came up to the 423.6 level, had a uh, solid retracement back to the downside, and now has essentially broke that level again to the upside. So the 685 level, if it can continue on with the rally, gives you a price objective to a 120.07. If uh, we uh, take the range from uh, the 113.08 to 116.32, the Fibonacci level of the 161.8 was right where it uh, encountered some resistance and the trend has been higher we can see that this uh, support level was at the area of resistance this resistance level was at support so thus if we have a breakout you're going to want to see the 11832 area become a level where it can find an area of support as far as the next chart if we, or the same chart it's just different ranges if we take a look at this range from 115.20 to 116.32, the first Fibonacci was an area where it, break th where it broke through. It uh, consolidated around that line and thus has made it to the uh, 261 level at 118. And now the uh, next level is 120, which gives it some extra significance for its importance. As far as the most recent range that we've been in, the, oh, the second most recent. This is the most recent range in here, the one that we just established. But the one that was from 116.35 to 117.55, the 161.8 was the uh, area of resistance. 119.50 would be its uh, next uh, resistance level. And we can see uh, uh, between this range here at 118.84. So 119 seems to be the next level that it would be going towards on some sort of breakout. This chart is the hourly chart with gold. And these averages will explain them for you now. This blue line is the volume weighted average price from this high in here. The line that this one has that uh, has went higher, went lower, and is now going sideways that is the 20 day moving average. And I find that very impressive how it was support for quite some time. And then when it gave in, that was the reversal towards this market. We uh, broke this uh, downtrend line and we can see how the 20 was resistance. It is now flattened out with one support test of that area. The yellow line, that is the declining 50 day moving average resistance at this area in here and now we are coming back to that area of resistance once again. As far as the Fibonacci retracement is concerned from this high and towards this low the first Fibonacci level has already been taken at 117.08. You still would like to see where it could come back as a level of support and then make a test of this 119.56 level as the next Fibonacci level for it. Uh, however, you could also make a case for this inverted head and shoulders pattern and we'd like to see maybe another rally up another a dollar where we could be building the left shoulder here, the uh, head in here, and then like I say, you'd want to go up to 119 and then pull back to this Fibonacci level of 117 and then create the uh, right shoulder. And uh, what this tells us is that the uh, the buyers right now are in control, but because we are within this 117 to 119 and a half range, it's still showing a lot of neutrality within the market. Number uh, the next uh, the next chart is the daily chart for gold. And the Fibonacci that we have is, it says EXP Fibonacci, that's exponential. I'm not going to go over too, too much on this. What exponential Fibonacci is good for is with the larger variance ranges, which 
when you got a range of uh, 120-ish down to uh, 60 something, that's a large variance. I'm still figure, trying to figure out how it works for the upside, but that'll just come with time. However, nonetheless, we can see that uh, this line here, that's the uh, volumated weighted average price since the 09 highs. It was resistance on the way down. It has uh, since this rally, we have had a test of this support area. We also have the uh, blue line, which is the 200-day uh, moving average. It's coinciding with this area. And the VWAP from the 08 high, uh, wait, lows, is this uh, reddish-looking line also. So the uh, key thing here is that we are in a bullish trend. We The only people who are losing positions right now on a nominal level are those who bought within this top range here. So most people mathematically are in winning positions, which means that from this high towards this low, we are above this 23.6. So as long as we can stay above the 107.60 area, that will remain bullish within this chart. And really, even above this level is bullish. It's just when you're between this line and this line, you got to be a little more cautious. It's still a very, very uh, bullish chart for uh, the goal. Now, the uh, next chart that we are looking at will uh, be the uh, same daily chart. It's just we're going to look at some upside Fibonacci. And uh, this little right shoulder from its previous inverted head and shoulders pattern had a range of 84.92 on April the 17th of 09 and 98.99. The 161 level got up to 107.69, which was an area it broke through, came close to the 261. But this was an area that was found as a big level of support. It's now came up to that level for resistance. Just by looking at this slide to this slide, you can pretty much see that it's uh, it's very close to its uh, first level of Fibonacci. And we've, since we've hit this level, the next time there, it's an area where you could break it. Its next price target for breaking it is 144.52. And the uh, next chart will uh, show the range from the November 13th big lows and the highs from February the 22nd. And we are now battling right now with this uh, first Fibonacci level of 117.64, which was resistance. It is uh, trying to become support, which gives us a price objective up to 147.82. So that's a uh, pretty nice target where the last one had a price objective for uh, 144.52. So it is... Uh, Probably about 145 on GLD, which really works out to about 1500 gold, would be the next major price move coming. This is the uh, 1968 to current chart, so gold's really, really big chart. I was unable to put the dates in at the bottom, and that's how many uh, ticks that this is, over 10,500. Well, 10, different days since 1968 to today and the numbers on the right hand side they uh, were adjusted towards a Fibonacci scale but we're going to t focus our attention on this chart and by looking at it it's very simple you had a uh, move to the upside which then was corrected through time which has then since had another move to the upside so we had a bull range, we had a market correction through time, and now another bull range. So we've still barely extended these gains by looking at this particular chart. So therefore, what we're going to do now is take a look at the next one, which would be the chart, which, uh, i trying to remember which one it was. Okay, the, the upside from 1970, January the 19th, at 3489 to the top part of this range of uh, 197.50. The 161.8, which has been supported at three occasions, $300 an ounce. Then the 261 level, which is 475, and that was resistance within this range. So this is the 80 top. So from like 1984 or so. 85 to the end of the 1990s, this is the range it traded in with between these two Fibonacci levels. The 423 was resistance in 1980. It was also resistance at the uh, 
what looks to be the 2006 highs, or 2005 highs area. And as far as these numbers are concerned, it just happens to match with this. So even though 161 was 29807, you can say 261 was 475. 423 is about 750. And then uh, 685 is actually 1150.11. I put that number in because we are actually working towards that level now. We've already found support at its previous Fibonacci. What you would like to see is maybe a pullback down towards this level here and then a breakout of this level. It could also just uh, ride this Fibonacci for a while, then break it. When you break it, your next price objective would be up towards about uh, 1900 to 2000 per ounce. The uh, next chart, we're going to take a look at the range that it has had from the uh, period of, uh, well, the 19, uh, 1980. We had some of the numbers in here. It was really hard to get the numbers on the spreadsheet. However, as far as this chart is concerned, from the 1980 highs to the 2000 bottom, the uh, 161 level, which seems like it's just too close, is uh, at this 1124 level. And the reason why is because it really is a linear Fibonacci method. And this is a logarithmic chart, but if you do the math on this, a little under 300 and a little over 800, that's over 500 of a difference, which means that it has to be at this level if you're doing that kind of math. But if people are looking at that Fibonacci, then it could also just become that uh, self-fulfilling prophecy in which that it is. But anyway, a breakout of this level gives us a price objective up towards about 1800. The uh, next chart we are going to look at is uh, a look at uh, gold versus its previous run. This was gold from the uh, 1970 up towards the 1980 area where it had its big, big gain. If we use its same percentage gain that it had from that point here, basically what we will be doing is starting gold all over here down to here. This is what gold would have uh, been trading at had it had the same percentage moves already over 5,000. So what this chart is showing us is that the rate of ascension in which gold has been having has been steady towards the upside when we have a trend line that looks like this, but it really hasn't been as much of great uh, frequency to the upside when it's been trading at a much lower percentage, that is, than it previously had before. The uh, the next chart will show it just a little more. It's the same chart. This just shows it a little more clearer how uh, gold was able to have these much larger uptrends, where you can see the uptrend lines. The rate of ascent is so much larger than it is during its uh, current time frame. And like I say, people are still saying that this is a bubble. I really really do not uh, see how it is a bubble. And if that's the case, we're looking at the Dow Jones now. Was it not up too much here? Because that's what people are saying, that gold is up too much. Based on the chart, it's got to sell off. But when the Dow was at like 3,000 to 4,000, with the mainstream media saying, hey, guys, this is the uh, top. If that's the case, they would have been dead wrong. So just because something is up too much doesn't mean it's going to stop going up. At some point it will, but do you know what that sub point is? For if we compare the Dow Jones with gold, what I mean by this is from the same point that gold bottom for 1982 in comparison to gold's bottom, you can see that gold, or this purple being stock market, that, that kept going higher. So if the if gold was to go up the same rate that uh, gold or that the stock market did from 82 to 2000 which was two decades long it would go well over 3000 per ounce thank you for watching i did fly through this video for what i want to but i looked at the charts that i had i thinking, man this was going to be like a 30 minute video and i didn't want that so if you have any questions, please let me know because I did go through this pretty fast. But the uh, the key was to explain the uh, Fibonacci level and uh, hope that uh, you learned something. Take care.